Hello, my name's Scott Davis. Welcome to New World Birth. This is the weekly neutrino forecast for May 25th to May 31st of 2014. Human design is a synthesis of four ancient uh, wisdom systems as a bridge to understanding our potential to discover our path to making decisions that are correct for us as individuals. Those traditions are astrology, the I Ching, the Hindu Brahman chakra system, and the Kabbalistic Tree of Life. So we're going to look at how these systems work together in human design. Well, we start by looking at the sun and the planets, the nodes, the moon, in the wheel, much like we would in astrology, except instead of looking at them in relationship to zodiological constellations or to each other by the angles that they make, we look at them in relation to the uh, hexagrams of the I Ching, which you can see on the outside of the wheel. There's these stacks of, of, uh, of six lines. Uh, and then those are then mapped to specific locations in the body graph here. So on the 25th, we have the sun in Gemini, and it's in the 20th hexagram. And we can look all the way outside the wheel. We see this stack of six lines. The lines are numbered from bottom to top. This one goes yin, 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 yang, yang uh, for, for the 20th hexagram. Uh, the uh, shapes inside the body graph are called centers, uh, and, and uh, they represent our evolution as human beings from having seven chakras to now having nine centers, uh, coincidental to Herschel's discovery of the planet Uranus in 1781. The pathways between the centers are called channels and are from the Kabbalah. Uh, these black strips of paper on the diagram, they represent uh, gates being activated by the sun, the planets, and the nodes, regardless of whether they form a channel. I'm not following the moon in this demonstration. It moves very, very fast, activating three to four gates uh, in a day, uh, which would turn this presentation into a several-hour event, and which I don't feel would be very practical. Anyway, the sun is in the 20th hexagram, and it's ma a map to an opening uh, in an energy channel called gate. And here we have the 20th gate right there, which is uh, the uh, uh, which is the gate of the now. Uh, contemplation, recognition, and awareness in the now transforms understanding into right action. Uh, it's located in the, uh, the throat center in an individual energy path in the knowing circuit called the channel of the brain wave, a design of penetrating awareness that connects to the 57th uh, gate of intuitive insight, the gentle. Uh, being part of the integration channels, uh, which uh, include the 57, the 34, the 10, and the 20, um, we also, uh, we also um, see that, uh, that the 20th uh, forms the channel of awakening, uh, a design of commitment and commitment to higher principles with the tenth gate of uh, behavior of the self treading and the channel of charisma, which we can see on this chart right now, uh, with uh, which uh, is uh, the design of thoughts becoming deeds uh, with the 34th gate of uh, power, the power of the great. And I found human design to be amazingly accurate in describing the person that I use it as my primary tool when I provide readings. We have the following activated gates on May 25th. We have the sun in the 20th gate. We have the earth in the 34th gate. North node in the 50th. South node is in the 3th. Uh, Mercury is in the 12th gate. Uh, with uh, Venus in the 42nd gate. Uh, Mars newly direct in the 18th gate. Uh, Jupiter in the 53rd gate, uh, Saturn is retrograde in the 43rd gate, Uranus is in the 51st gate, Neptune is in the 37th, and we have Pluto retrograde in the 38th. So obviously not every gate activation forms a channel, but this information is very helpful uh, if you know your human design chart, because some of these transits form channels with potentials within your design chart. Um, and, and so you can look at your own personal body graph and see how these are connecting up with, uh, with, uh, your, your particular design. Um, and then, um, uh, so, and if you don't have your chart, 
you can go to a jovianarchive.com and uh, click on the button that says get your free rave chart and then uh, enter in your birth information and you can follow along with your chart looking at how it interacts with the transit field. So the, this is a neutrino forecast. It's just a weather report. It's, it's, you know, no matter what the weather is, an individual's strategy and authority are the correct choice to having uh, an authentic experience regardless of what's happening in the program. As Ross said, whatever the weather is going to be, you have your neutrino umbrella. As long as you're experimenting with your strategy and your authority, the weather is for your pleasure. Um, and so we begin the week, this week with two channel definitions. Uh, we have Venus in the 42. We have Jupiter in the 53. This gives us the channel of maturation. It's only here for the first day of, uh, of the week on May 25th. Um, this uh, brings energy to be cautious about starting something new, uh, although I'm not sure how this affects uh, folks at, as a transit, but for folks who have this in their birth chart, it's about, you know, if you make a commitment, it has to be followed to its conclusion. So we might be a little more careful on the 25th about making a commitment because it, perhaps it might be difficult to get out of later. Uh, this energetic uh, leads to having the same experience over and over and over again. And if you try to abort it before completion, uh, it, it, which may take seven years, uh, you just get the same thing over and over again, like I was saying. Uh, so it might feel like that movie Groundhog Day, where the experiences just keep repeating themselves, uh, and it slowly brings us to a state of uh, maturity and wisdom. Uh, the, the wisdom that all life is a journey that never ends. Uh, uh, we, we may uh, uh, all feel a little more deeply attuned to cycles of life during this uh, few days, uh, you know, more apt to notice the planetary cycles or the body cycles or historical cycles uh, when, we're, when we have the transit field with the channel of maturation. Um, and also, it's going to affect us non-generator types and feeling more busy and having the endurance to work just... If you don't have a defined cycle, don't get used to it. Uh, also, uh, the Sun-Earth axis, we've got the Sun in the 34, we've got the, I mean, sorry, the Sun in the 20, and the Earth in the 34. Uh, this, this is uh, one of the few channels that's defined by a polarity. This one's called the Channel of Charisma. It's with us until the 26th, and it influences us uh, to become, again, busier in the now, uh, where, where, where the things we talk about become the experiences we're having, uh, where expect folks to be more deeply involved in, 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 uh, in, uh, uh, sorry, so things we think about become the experiences that we're having. Uh, you know, again, folks are deeply, uh, involved in their daily activities, unaware of the expectations of others, uh, where people are not likely to even notice how busy they are with the possibility of erupting sponta spontaneously without an awareness of why, uh, you know, people are just in their own little world, you know, that kind of out of sight, out of mind situation. Um, so we're going to be looking at the sun's Ravi Ching line values uh, daily because 70% of the neutrinos we receive come through the sun. And as Ra Uruhu said in Design Perspectives number 56, in a pre presentation titled Living with the Program with Ra Uruhu, the lines of the day, when talking about these uh, daily shifts of line values, he said we can always take advantage of the themes of the day. Um, you know, of course, if your strategy and authority doesn't lead you in that direction, you can just always just notice how the program's affecting others in your environment. So let's get started with this. Again, uh, so we got May 25th. We've got the sun. It's in the fifth line, the her heretical line of the 20th hexagram. The sun in the 20th. Uh, fifth line, and with the fifth line is described as realism. Uh, contemplation in and of itself is no guarantee of success. Where, uh, uh concentration, uh, on details results in the perfected form. Um, the success, uh, of, uh, expressing awareness through detail is the exaltation. Detrimented, where reality creates dissatisfaction and adds to instability. The expression of awareness in the now through dissatisfaction with the reality one sees. Uh, fifth line days, uh, again, the heretic, they're heretical. It's a day of suspicion, 
but also a day of universalization. Uh, something may leak out and spread like a virus, like a YouTube video that suddenly has millions of viewings, or uh, a Facebook post that goes viral. But there's also a great deal of suspicion and paranoia on a fifth line day, which impacts the nature of our relationships. Also, projection and seduction are themes of a fifth line day. Uh, but later on the 25th, the sun moves into the sixth line. So it gets up here to the role model line of the 25th, 20th uh, hexagram. This shift happens at 11.06 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. I'm going to be using Eastern Daylight Times for all the times in this report, so you're going to want to convert that to your local time zone so you, you, you uh, know when that to expect these, uh, these shifts. Uh, the sun in the 20th hexagram, 6th line, uh, this is wisdom, contemplation, where the results, uh, uh, which results in the ability to apply understanding, result in the establishment uh, for the benefit of society, values, ideals, and their patterns, and how they can be un understood and applied. The ability to transform individual awareness for the general application and understanding. Detriment is really kind of the same as the exaltation, but motivated by self-satisfying mental challenge rather than altruism. The ability to transform individual awareness for general app, for general application, uh, for the mental, ch for me the mental challenge. Uh, and then uh, six line days, uh, Ra talked about, uh, you know, not getting stuck with your head in the cloud, um, because you might end up having something run into your kneecap. So we're up here in a role model. We're on the roof of the hexagram. We're looking beyond. Uh, so there's a lack of focus on what's going on around them. Folks are not m maybe as aware of their immediate environment. So like a third line day, there might be certain dangers of not seeing a car coming, not seeing a bill coming. Um, and then uh, Venus moves from the 42nd uh, hexagram and gate, uh, which then uh, uh, means that we no longer have the uh, defined root center. Uh, and it, it moves and joins the south node in the third gate. Um, and Ra talks about it, Venus being very powerful and deeply misunderstood, uh, it, that it brings moral, uh, it brings morality, natural law in which we deal with the other and the consequence of the world around us. It, what disturbs you on a moral level? Your design and personality, Venuses will tell you about the moral dilemma you're going to work with in this life. And if you don't act with moral clarity, uh, Venus can be very unkind in its retribution. In the, uh, in the three Venuses, uh, in, in about ordering and difficulty in the, in the beginning, the fundamental challenge to, uh, initiate is to, uh, transcend, uh, confusion and establish order. Uh, Venus in the first line of the third, uh, hexagram, is uh, synthesis. Uh, difficulties can only be overcome uh, uh, when all the pertinent factors have been analyzed. Uh, exalted, the understanding that confusion is natural and must always exist before clarity can be uh, can be uh, understand uh, can be uh, uh, can be achieved. Uh, the uh, innate knowing that order will emerge from confusion, uh, detrimented, uh, the reliance on uh, intellect at the expense of intuition can lead to unnecessary frustration. The inability to know that order will emerge and the drive to find its, uh, its knowing elsewhere. Um, so on the 26th, the sun moves from the 16, uh, from the 20 to the 16. So that gives us this definition, which of course then uh, we also have that the the Earth uh, uh, moves and it moves over here to the ninth hexagram. Um, so we no longer have uh, this definition of uh, the throat or the uh, sacral center so um and uh so and uh, again the earth moves from the 34 to the ninth gate of 
focus, the, the taming of the, the, the taming power of the small. Um, this shift happens at 1032 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. We've got uh, the sun here in the 16th gate of skills, enthusiasm, the great art of enriching life by the harmonic channeling of energy. The sun in the 16-1, uh, so we're down here in the, the uh, investigative line of delusion, uh, false enthusiasm, exalted, it's the daydreamer, the expression of talent through daydreaming, detrimented the public uh, communication of inevitability, uh, it, 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 uh, unreal, uh, uh, communication of it, uh, uh, inevitably uh, unrealized claims. The, the tendency to express fantasy as fact. So now that we moved into a, a new hexagram, we are down in the lower track, our first, second, and third line days. Um, our people are looking inward. They're absorbed in their own process. So the theme of a first line day is fear or anxiety that needs to be investigated. So the energy is kind of like a day to study, not to act, a day to look into things, not to jump. It's a good day to deal with things you don't understand, can't make sense of, or don't know. Also on the 26th, uh, Mercury moves, and it moves from the 12th uh, uh, gate to the 15th. So we've got quite a bit of movement here on the 26th. Uh, and so Mercury, Mercury is the messenger of the gods. This is about communication, the expansion of human consciousness through communications, not just as words, but also as music, uh, when Ra was describing Mercury. Uh, what do we need to communicate in life? Well, we communicate uh, the message of our design Mercury through the medium of our personality Mercury. So what might be communicated uh, with Mercury in the 15? Well, it might be a balance between extremes. This is the gate of extremes, modesty, the quality of behavior which expresses the proper balance between extremes. Uh, Mercury in the 15... Uh, it's in the first line. Uh, uh, this is uh, duty, the ability to confront any challenges without expectations, exalted harmonic relationships, which give support for the fulfillment of any task, the capacity of self, uh, of self to confront any challenge through extreme and harmonic relationships. Uh, detrimented, um, it's alienation engendered through uh, through exaggerated claims, the capacity of the self to alienate others through extremes. Also on the 26th, Saturn, which is retrograde, backs out of the 43 and into the 1. Um, and so uh, Ra described Saturn as yin and yang clothing. Saturn is the judge. It's the place of vulnerability uh, where we deal with the consequences of our actions. Uh, Saturn is in the first gate of self-expression, the creative creation as a primal force, the energy potential to manifest inspiration without limitation. Uh, since Saturn is retrograde, it's, it comes in at the sixth line because it's moving backwards from our perspective here on Earth, uh, which is the line of objectivity, clarity in creative expression with subjectivity leading to frustration. Um, you know, and Saturn, uh, strategy and authority are the best way to avoid paying uh, the Saturnian price in life. Um, and then on the 27th, the sun moves into the second line. So it's moved from the investigator up into the line of the opportunist. Again, 16th hexagram. Uh, the shift uh, happens at 9.57 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. The sun's exalted in the 16.2. It's described as the cynic, uh, the sharpness to burst bubbles, exalted self-reliance and the skill to judge objectively any claim regardless of rhetoric, uh, the expression of skill to judge objectiv objectively. Uh, second line days, uh, you know, think about it. This is, this is the hermit, you know, so people are waiting for something. They're waiting for a call. They're stuck in their own trip. You know, so you might want to not want to schedule your party on that day because nobody's going to come, you know, and then uh, it's also the natural. And then on the uh, 28th, the sun moves into the third line. So now we're in the line of the martyr. Uh, again, 16th hexagram, 
Uh, this shift happens at 9.24 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, where it's detrimented. And it's detrimented, and I'm just going to move this one ahead, because it's detrimented because Mars, during that same day, moves into the uh, 48 uh, hexagram, the well, which then gives us this whole cap channel. Um, and these definitions. Um, but uh, yeah, it's funny because when you look at this in the chart, you're going to see it's the just now chart, you're going to see the sun's detrimented. But the reason it's detrimented is because Mars is detrimented in the third line of the 16th hexagram, and because Mars is over here in 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 the uh, the harmonic uh, gate forming the channel of talent in the 48, it's detrimenting the sun while it's in the third uh, line of the 16th hexagram. Uh, which is uh, interdependence, uh, self-generating and sustaining enthusiasm, detriment the child whose overconfidence may lead to frustration and the ensuing dependence on others to regenerate enthusiasm, thus creating uh, an unnecessary uh, 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 reliance. Uh, the needs to have others confirm one's skill or talent. Uh, you know, and okay, again, we're in a third line day, so again, being careful on the road, being careful what's in your environment, whether it's someone's elbow swinging by or, or a door or whatever. The day might, uh, you know, we've got third line bonds made and broke and trial and error process. Um, so you might find that you make a relationship there or you break a relationship or break and make one in the same day or vice versa. So third line days are about a trial and error. And that things bump into you. It's it's a good material day. It's a good day to do business and work on the material plane according to Ra. But just be careful because things can go wrong. But those things are things that lead to discovery. And we've already made the move here of, of Mars moving uh, from the 18 back into the 48 as it's now moving direct. Uh, so in this is the 48th gate of the well depth. Um, this is uh, the, the necessary and qualitative foundation that is a prerequisite to establish the common good, bringing an extraordinary and immature energy uh, resource uh, in, in the form of, uh, of a store of vital information as a pattern. Uh, it's in its detriment in the first line of, of insignificance, the ego tendency to uh, apply uh, energy to trivial considerations. Uh, and while in the 48, uh, Mars is bringing this energy for practice uh, and refinement that matures over time by following your strategy and authority uh, through the arts, but also through the recognition of patterns that are shared with the collective. And Ross spoke about Mars being an extraordinary and immature energy resource that lacks refinement and is subject to outbursts, and Mars represents the warrior archetype. So by following our strategy and authority, we slowly refine the energy of our design and personality, Mars, from immaturity to wisdom. Uh, Mars moving direct on, has been moving direct since the 19th. Uh, it enters into the first line of the 48th uh, hexagram, which is, uh, again, insignificance. Um, uh, where we've, um, you know, uh, the ego uh, a tendency to apply uh, energy to trivial considerations, a taste for trivia, are the detrimented uh, uh, um, uh, descriptions uh, for, the, for that gate. Um, and then, of course, we've got the sun is up here in the 16, and we've got uh, Mars down here in the 48, and we've got a throat center that popped off and it's back now. Um, and uh, hopefully it will stay there. Um, so w w when we look at this, this is what we get is this is the channel of the wavelength. It's a design of talent, and it's going to be with us until June 1st. Uh, this is a collective logic channel, uh, which uh, for those folks who, who have this in their design, uh, in, in their, in their uh, natal chart, is about reaching some level of mastery through practice. This channel is about caring skills as well. 
you know, given that this is just a short period uh, for this channel to be defined by the program, it's hard to consider how it's going to condition people. But it might be, uh, ha we might find that folks are engaged in the repetition of some type of creativity uh, to make a g gradual I improvement. Collective logic creativity is actually very different from individual creativity uh, in that this is a creativity that's earned through hard work and commitment that is to be shared with the collective, whereas uh, individual creativity is about empowerment in the now. Uh, for those of us who don't have uh, this uh, splenic definition uh, in our charts, Ra warned that this might be a, a time where we let go of something that isn't good for us, that, that we, let, we actually let go of something that is good for us when the transit field defines our splenic center. Um, the 29th, the sun moves into the fourth line. So now we're up into the line of the opportunist again. 16th uh, hexagram. Uh, the shift is at 8.50 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. The sun's detrimented in the 16th, uh, in the fourth line, but again by Mars being down here in the 48th gate. Uh, the fourth line of the 16th hexagram is described as the leader. Uh, genuine and sincere support and recognition of others. Detrimented, the demagogue. Uh, the refusal to support or recognize the talents of others. And so fourth line days, we're moving from this lower trigram inner perspective to the upper trigram, uh, outward perspective, uh, you know, uh, themes of fourth line days are friendship and companionship, network, and fourth line days are great for social interaction. Uh, people are more open to networking and to being friendly and social under a fourth line influence. And then May 30th, the sun now moves up into the fifth line of the heretic. Um, again, 16th hexagram, shift is at 8, 17 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. The sun in the 16th, 5, is described as the Grinch. The refusal to share enthusiasm exalted the power to avoid enthusiasm for the sole purpose uh, uh, of uh, being converted. Uh, as with uh, Dickens' Scrooge character in The Christmas Carol, uh, it's the eventual con uh, you know, conversion leads to greater and more enduring enthusiasm, a lack of confidence in expressing in the expression of skills that need to be incur that needs to uh, that needs the encouragement of others. Detriment the perverse feeling that sharing in enthusiasm hampers individual uh, development. You know, why should I be happy when dot, 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 you know, etc. Uh, it's a lack of confidence in the value of encouraging others. Again, so we're back here in the fifth line where we, we started this report. Uh, again, her her heretical day, day of suspicion, universalization is also a theme where we talked about, you know, things going viral. Um, you know, uh, we've got... Uh, um, uh, you know, paranoia. Uh, I've said before, it's only paranoia if they're really not out to get you. They might be, you know. So I, I happen to know as a fifth line, there's a projection. And if you don't meet that projection, then the punishment follows. That's why we have influence over the people we don't know. Don't let them get too close because then they're going to project on if the projection shifts. Uh, if you're a fifth line. Uh, but anyway, fifth line days can, can impact the nature of our relationships because of the suspicion and the paranoia and, 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 you know, these other, uh, you know, negative projections. Um, so then also on the 30th, uh, we have Venus, uh, making a move and it leaves the third, uh, uh, the third hexagram and moves over here to the 27th. Uh, so we still have the third because the south node is still down here. But now we, uh, we have, uh, Venus is in the 27th. Um, and, um, you know, like I said before, Venus is about morality. It's about how we interact, uh, and the consequences of, of, uh, how we interact with the world around us and deal with others. Um, Venus in, uh, the 27 is about caring and nourishment and the enhancement of the quality 
and and substance of all activities through caring. Uh, Venus is in the 27th hexagram in the first line of uh, of selfishness. Exalted, the ego-driven first law, law of caring for uh, of caring for oneself is not necessarily at the expense of others. The power to care for oneself first. A detrimental envy and its intended attendant misfortunes. Uh, the power power of selfishness that man is uh, manifested through envy. So we've got Venus in the twenty seven. We've got the North Node in the fifty. Uh, this gives us the channel of of preservation, which uh, will be affecting us uh, until June fourth. Um, the, the conditioning of this channel for those of us who do not have it as part of our design is to maintain or change the values of people uh, in your community uh, during this time period. Uh, this could be a time where folks uh, take, on, take on so much responsibility that they lose sight of themselves. People are more likely to focus on uh, nurturing and, and guiding those in need, particularly children. Um, since this, the North Node is involved in this definition of this channel, uh, we might look at our environment to see if we absorb, observe the themes uh, of values uh, being established or undermined being played out in, the di in dialogue or in action, which may involve attempts to bring those who are seen as outsiders into the community. So these are all things we might be seeing in our environment because the North Node is part of this definition. Um, for those of us who don't have the splenic definition again, so now we've got it with two channels, uh, Rod did talk about that if you don't have splenic definition, but you, but it, there's a splenic definition through the transit field, that, that, uh, w those of us without that splenic definition, we might feel, uh, the, 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 that we're going to, uh, let go of something that is good for us uh, while the transit field is defining this planet center. On the 31st, the sun moves into the sixth line, the role model line of the 16th uh, hexagram. Uh, the shift is at 7.45 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. The sun in the 16.6 is gullibility. Uh, the, the, the susceptibility to, uh, para, uh, propaganda exalted the ability to experience, examine, and then reject, uh, misleading enthusiasm. The talent to access uh, the expression of, uh, of others, uh, detrimented the, uh, is pretty much the same principle as uh, the exaltation, but with a painful withdrawal. Its enthusiasm uh, for social structures permanently uh, uh, permanently prejudiced the failure to access the ex uh, expression of others. And again, we talked about a sixth line day, not getting stuck with your head in the clouds, uh, you know, because it's looking beyond. Uh, so, you know, like a, a, on a third line day, not seeing something coming because we're looking to the future or thinking about the next thing instead of where we currently are and what's going on. So um, this week, the sun begins to move through the, the hexagrams of the 16, the 35, the 45, and and the 12, which are all the gates that are associated with the Lakshmi God's head. And this is the second God's head of the quarter of civilization, which is the most yin location uh, in, uh, in the wheel. And so this is uh, feminine. The mother, the birth of civilization emerging from the womb, the goddess that uh, bestows the qualities of civilization. Uh, but so, but the work is really seems to get uh, put on the female here. Uh, and the, it's the work that's up to the form, uh, which uh, becomes a distortion that becomes the patriarchy when the mind believes that it controls the form and the civilization uh, it brings the belief. That males are going to control females, uh, and all the gods' heads of the quarter of civilization are goddesses. Uh, the quarter of civilization is described as from womb to room. Uh, the realm of Dubi uh, uh, contains all the eleven uh, throat gates, um, 
So, you know, this is, this is the quarter of civilization. Again, we're looking at 16 gates, uh, in, in any of the quarters. And with this one, 11 of them are located in the throat. We've got, as with every quarter, two coming out of the G center. And this one also has three, uh, coming out of the root center, uh, putting some pressure on, on civilization. Um, so, um, you know, and, and when I think of those 11, uh, that all the gates of the throat are part of the quarter of civilization. It reminds me of that story of the Tower of Babel, of, of, of Babel, where nothing can be built without communication and manifestation. And the program brings us a pressure to manifest while in the quarter of civilization. Uh, but as we move from Maya to Lakshmi, we're moving from survival to abundance. So Lakshmi, is about about that civilization continues to improve. She's the Hindu goddess of wealth, love, prosperity, both material and spiritual, fortune, uh, uh, and the embodiment of beauty. And one of her names is, is Prakruti, uh, which I know from Ayurveda as meaning form. So it's interesting that uh, form comes up even within her name, as opposed to Purusha, which is uh, is the word for soul. So Lakshmi is the goddess of wealth and good fortune, but it's also about providing education so that children can go out and build a better life, you know, be able to have something that's better than what their parents had. Uh, and the gates move for, for Lakshmi. We're moving through the development of skills, the 16, and, and making progress, 35 from the crisis of the collective. Uh, uh, so that children can take care of their parents and tribe by supporting them with what they've gathered, the 45. And finally, the, the, the restraint of individuals when confronted with temptation, the 12, which, uh, you know, temptation that comes from living in a civilized world. And so this continues to show us the program's subjugation of form to the mind strategy for, to survival which, like the Maya god head, puts this responsibility on women. Uh, women who uh, provide the talent, the women who provide the early education for children. So with Lakshmi, we have a drive for wealth building, for making progress, for having talent. But balance is restored in Lakshmi by strategy and authority, returning the control to the form. And, you know, I was thinking about civilization today because today, uh, when I'm recording this, uh, Uranus has moved into the 51st gate of shock. And so I was wondering, when was Uranus last in the 51st hexagram? And the answer is the first time it dipped into uh, the 51st uh, previously was June of 1930, which was a time of instability in the United States stock market. Uh, but it, it, but it, it then retrograded back into the 21st gate, sixth line of chaos in August of 1930. So folks believed that the system was back in control. Uh, but then it left the 21st hexagram, uh, for good in, in April of 1931. Uh, the shocking realization that the system was irreparably damaged and that control had been lost. Uh, and that that then of course is followed by the 42nd uh, hexagram of endings, brain completion, and then later uh, the the third hexagram of difficulty in the beginning, uh, birthing of something new. You know, the third hexagram is the fundamental change of initiation is to transcend confusion and establish order. So I, I really do believe we're we're living in some interesting times, but. No matter what the energies are that are conditioning you during the week, remember this is experience is about being a passenger and riding in a vehicle that's driven by the magnetic monopole, uh, so that you can just enjoy the scenery. Let the vehicle take you where it needs to go through using your strategy and authority. Every single day we have is a blessing. No matter what the dramas are that are beckoning to distract us, we're all here just giving the performance of our lifetime on the world stage. Just take some time out to observe the play as well as act your part. Remember, you're a spiritual being that's having a human experience. 
Um, so thank you for checking out New World Birth. The next segment of the weekly neutrino forecast will be on June 2nd of 2014. Should be available by May 31st, when we're going to continue to look at the influence of uh, of the heavenly bodies as they transit the, the sky and the hexagrams of the I Ching. You can check us out on Facebook or Blogger or YouTube, where there's uh, each one of those. There's a New World Birth uh, 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 page established. Um, and I encourage you to share this information as videos or as text as widely as you choose. I'm going to be discussing the transits of June 2014 and providing some short 10 to 15 minute human design readings uh, to the participants of the Earth Needs Rebel Show on Truth Frequency Radio uh, on Monday, uh, June 2nd. The show starts at 1 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time. I come on at 1.30, uh, and the show goes to 3 o'clock p.m. Uh, and uh, if you want to come on the show, you can go into the chat space and, and get your uh, your information to Katie, or she, you can uh, personal message her, uh, and, and uh, if you want to give her your phone number, they'll call you for free anywhere on the planet to uh, bring you on the show. I invite you to contact me at newworldbirth at yahoo.com if you have any questions or you wish to schedule a reading. And so if you've been thinking about getting a reading, please contact me. I'd love to provide you a reading during these uncertain times. You'll need to either be able to call me in Maine in the USA or we can connect on Skype to receive your reading. Uh, we're also accepting donations to keep these reports freely available. As always, I am blessed that you've taken the time to connect with my passion for all of these ancient mysteries and their application to our journey during this incarnation. The light in me honors the light in you. Namaste. In Lakesh. And as Ra would say, love yourself. And as always, I am totally grateful for your, uh, for your being here and participation. Hope to connect with you either on the radio show or in the reading or uh, a future video. Um, so thanks, everybody, and uh, peace.